Hey everybody, VR Gaming Fan here. Um, I got my pre-order in for the HTC Vive. It's uh, we're shipping out next month, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll have lots of uh, cool VR content to play with. Uh, in the meantime, I've been checking out a lot of online reviews and user experiences with both the the Vive and the Oculus Rift, and uh, there are some important points that I find are being overlooked or glossed over or missed uh, when people are discussing uh, the Vive versus the Oculus Rift. And I wanted to uh, cover these because I think they're very important issues. And they're the reasons why I chose the Vive over the Oculus Rift. Now, as some of you already know, um, the, uh, the, the channel logo that I use is an Oculus Rift. Uh, we had a Rift DK1 um, that we played around with for a while. Uh, I personally couldn't use it because it, it caused way too much motion sickness for me, but uh, as you saw on my channel, my, my friends really enjoyed it and had a lot of fun with it. Um, but there are many problems with the consumer version of the Rift that uh, are reasons why I stayed away from it. I wanted to cover these reasons. So, uh, first off, there is the illusion of a cheaper price. It's $600 versus the $800 for the Vive. But the Oculus Rift doesn't include the motion controllers and the extra camera needed to run the motion controllers. So all of those you're going to have to buy at some point down the road. And ri uh, Oculus has given hints that they're going to be pretty expensive. Um, so basically, you're looking at $800 for either one, if not more, for the Rift. So the idea that the Rift is cheaper is nonsense. Um, also with the Vive, it, from the outset, it had motion controllers and full uh, movement support. And as a result, the, the titles being designed for it are um, designed with that in mind. Whereas because the initial release of the Rift is sit down only, uh, doesn't have any motion controllers, a lot of the titles that are going to come out for the Rift aren't going to support a more immersive VR experience. So you're getting a much more limited VR experience and a more limited immersive library of titles that are potentially going to be available for the Rift uh, because people that wanted to cash in on the, the hype of initial launch aren't going to write titles uh, that include motion support because motion support doesn't exist yet for the Rift. They don't even have an estimated date yet for release. So there's that issue. Also, the, um, the Vive has a front-facing camera which the Rift does not have and will not ever have, at least this generation of the Rift. So, um, Augmented reality is not a possibility with the PlayStation VR or with the Oculus Rift. It is only available um, with uh, the Gear VR because uh, most uh, cell phones have uh, uh, a camera in them and things like the, uh, the HoloLens and things like that. The, the Vive supports both VR and AR because it has that front-facing camera. Also, for the purposes of full room support, and, and I'll get into some of the other limitations of the Rift as far as uh, their hints that they can they can do full room uh, in the future. Um, I'll get into that in just a second. But big limitation there is it doesn't have that front-facing camera, so it doesn't have the ability to perceive whether or not you are going to be encountering an obstacle while you're moving around, whereas the Vive does. The 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 entire design of the Vive supports that full room experience. You can still sit down and do any sit down experience that the Rift can do, you can do in the Vive. But there are experiences you can do in the Vive that you can only do in the Vive, or at least only do them safely uh, in the Vive, that you can't do with any of the other headsets. So when you're looking for a product where you're going to be able to experience all that VR has to offer, the Vive is the only option. Now also, there are exclusive titles 
when you're dealing with PlayStation, there are exclusive titles. When you're dealing with Oculus, there are no exclusive titles for um, Steam VR and for the HTC Vive. Now, some people might look at that as uh, a bad thing about the Vive. It means I get more access to more titles if I go with the Rift or if I go with the PlayStation VR. I'll get access to extra titles in addition to all the titles the Vive supports. I'll get access to all these other titles. The problem is exclusive titles are inherently anti-consumer. They're anti-you. They hold you hostage by your wallet. They lock you in to one publisher, one distributor, one product line, and they take away your freedom of choice. Steam is against that. Their philosophy of business is better than the philosophy of business of either Sony or of Oculus. So you also want to think about the long term. What kind of gaming environment do you want to be a consumer in? Do you want to be subject to? Do you want uh, this, this uh, anti-consumer all these titles being locked into one platform, so no matter what platform you get, unless you buy them all, you're never going to be able to access to all the titles. You're constantly going to have problems where titles are coming out that you want that you can't have because they're locked into one platform or another platform. Or do you want the VR gaming environment, which is just getting started and the rules haven't been set in stone yet, do you want your VR gaming environment to be one that is open so you have access to everything? If that's what you want, in a capitalist culture, you vote with your wallet. So by spending your money with a company that supports an open platform that anyone can use and anyone can publish to, you are telling game companies no more of this exclusive crap. Now, uh, as I mentioned earlier, there are other issues when it comes to doing a full room experience with the Rift. Once the, the Rift's motion controllers come out and the additional camera that comes with those, you can put those two cameras in tandem and as a result you can cover an area like a room and uh, theoretically you can do a full room experience like you can with the Vive. But the problem is, with the Vive, those sensors you put up on the wall are passive, meaning that all they do is they just send out information, they, they send out uh, a beam that the headset picks up so the headset knows where it is. The, 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 the stations themselves, they, they don't connect to anything other than power. And you can have any number of them you want. So if you've got a very large area or an irregularly shaped area and you get some extra lighthouses, you can put them up all over the place to, to cover the area um, without any problem whatsoever. And all they need is access to power outlets. No problem. It doesn't matter where your computer is, it doesn't matter where your play space is, where you're going to be using the headset, anything else. Um, and if you manage to come up with a wireless rig, like the, the backpack with a high-powered laptop that you connect the headset to so that you're completely wireless, you can move over you know, an unlimited-sized play area by just putting up extra lighthouses. Those are all possibilities with the Vive. Not with the Rift, because with the Rift, the cameras are all USB cameras and all of them need to be connected to the computer that the Rift is connected to. And so in order to do the same thing you do with the Vive, with the t just the two lighthouses, to do that with the two cameras for the Rift, you're going to have to run at least one very long USB extension cable, USB, USB 3 I believe, um, to that separate camera on the far side of the room, which is a pain in the butt. It's expensive. Also, it uses up another USB port on your computer. And a, a fundamental design difference between the Vive and the Rift is the Vive. And one, one of the things that people mention when, the, when they're talking about the difference between the Vive and the Rift as far as the feel of wearing them is that the Vive is a bit heavier. The reason why the Vive is a bit heavier is, one, it is the front-facing camera that the Rift doesn't have. But two, all the tracking hardware, all the, the work that is being done to figure out where the headset is, is in the headset. But with the Rift, 
It's in your computer. Your computer does that work. Which means the more cameras you add, in addition to using up more USB ports and running more extension cords and everything else, uh, USB extension cords, uh, it's also more workload on the processor of your computer to calculate all the information coming in from all those cameras. Whereas all of that work is done by the hardware in the Vive. So it doesn't matter. You can put up a hundred lighthouses. There's no extra processing that has to be done by your computer. So that you expand your play area, all, the, all that it costs you is the extra lighthouses. It doesn't cost you USB ports. It doesn't cost you extension cords or uh, USB extension cords. Um, and it doesn't cost you processing time for that extra calculating that needs to be done with all those extra cameras being added on. So although technically, theoretically, you can do a full room gaming experience with the, with the Rift, it is a much more limited and expensive and problematic uh, method than what you can do with the Vive right out of the box, no problem. And as far as the, 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 the comparisons where they say that the Rift is more comfortable because it's lighter, well, yes, that would be true. It is lighter. It's lighter because it's got less guts. There's less to it. I mean, my cell phone is lighter. But the reason is because my cell phone doesn't have as much in it as a Vive or Rift does. Um, I mean, if you want really, really comfortable uh, headgear, just wear a pair of glasses. Nice and light. But they don't do nearly as much. So that's the trade-off. You want it to do more? You want to have a better VR experience? It's going to be heavier. But some of the people that have complained about the, the comfort of the Vive versus the Oculus, um, uh, in the, the comment sections of those review videos, the, the commenters have pointed out that the, the people uh, doing the comparison aren't putting the Vive on properly. Properly mounted, it's not as front heavy as a lot of people seem to uh, indicate. Um, so it's important that you wear it properly. So look online get the right instructions, go to forums if necessary, and talk to people and find out the tips and tricks on how best to adjust the straps on the, the Vive um, to get that most comfortable fit. But people who have used the Vive extensively and have um, used it for really long gaming sessions, multiple hours gaming sessions, have said it's perfectly comfortable. They have no problem wearing it. So although comparatively the, the Rift may be slightly more comfortable than the Vive. The Vive is still perfectly comfortable for extended gaming sessions. So unless you're directly switching back and forth between the two to really notice the difference, you're not going to notice. It's perfectly comfortable, perfectly usable for very long gaming experiences. Uh, I've, I've seen um, reviews from people that have worn the, the, the Vive for as long as eight or nine hours at a stretch and not have any problem. And most people don't gain that long anyway. So as far as comfort goes, you're not going to have any issues. Glasses fit better in the Vive than in the Rift. So for those of us who have to wear glasses, and I'm not sure if I will have to wear it inside the headset, time will tell. Um, but for those of us that do, um, you're going to have a, an easier time with the Vive than with the Rift. The Vive also has an adjustment, which the Rift doesn't have, where you can adjust its distance from your face, which allows for more room for uh, glasses. So again, uh, better for glasses. Um, also, in the, uh, some controversy has come out about the, uh, the, the user license agreement for the Oculus Rift, where in the fine print, uh, they basically say that if you make anything for the Rift, or with the Rift, we immediately have some ownership of it. We can use it in our marketing materials and things like that without your permission, without your consent, without your knowledge. Um, and they uh, have also said that they can collect and sell your user data, including like room dimensions and, and everything else. All the information that you enter in or that is recorded by the Rift Keep in mind, Oculus is owned by Facebook, and Facebook is known for digging into people's personal information and selling it. Um, they've said that they're going to be doing the same thing 
with um, the Rift. So again, vote with your wallet. Is that the kind of business practices that you want to be encouraging and that you want to be subject to? So basically what it boils down to is the Rift isn't any cheaper. It gives you a more limited experience in both what the, the hardware can do and what you're going to be able to do in the future because uh, they support exclusive titles, which is anti-consumer. Um, and all of the, the, the real objective, noticeable differences between them. As I said, you know, the, the, the Rift is a little bit lighter and when people wear both headsets that go back and forth they say the Rift is a bit more comfortable um, when it comes down to it the only real differences, the differences that make a difference between the Vive and the Rift the Vive wins hands down every time so if you are think, uh, still debating about which headset that you're going to get if you're planning on getting one in the near future I would strongly encourage you to get the Vive. I've already put in my order for mine, and I can't wait for it to arrive. Um, and when it does, uh, I can't wait to show it off. Looking forward to it. Talk to you later.